Hello and welcome to another Keyshot 9 animation tutorial. In this video we're going to talk about the different types of model and part animations that can be done within Keyshot. Down at the bottom I already have my timeline open, which is going to be populated with all the animations that I create. Let's go ahead and select the animation wizard and talk about the different types of animations that are available. You can see here that each option is going to have a small video preview showing what the animation actually is. The first option, turntable, can only be applied to an entire model. This is going to be a rotation of whatever your entire model is around a particular point. Translations are going to be movements in a linear direction, while rotations can be a rotation around a part or a piece of reference geometry. We can also work with fades. Fade animations can be anywhere from 0 to 100% visibility. Let's go ahead and apply a turntable animation. I'll select turntable and hit next. It's then going to ask which model I'd like to animate. I'll proceed by selecting the top level model assembly, which will apply the turntable animation to my entire model. When I hit next, it will automatically give me an animation of 360 degrees with a default value of 5 seconds. The center of rotation by default will be the model, with the default direction being clockwise. This can be adjusted based on specific needs. Once satisfied, go ahead and select Finish. Now you can either scrub through the timeline or press play for a quick animation preview. Notice that the animation continues to rotate due to the loop animation option being toggled on. The default value for that rotation is going to be 360 degrees. I can also specify counterclockwise for the direction, but I'll leave that as clockwise for now. One thing that I definitely want to mention here is working with motion easing. Right now the motion easing is set to linear, which means it's going to be a constant velocity as the part moves. However, if I hit this drop down, I can get a preview of the different types of motion easing that are available, including easing in, easing out, a combination of the two, and a custom option new to Keyshot 9 which allows for adjusting easing on a custom animation curve. You'll see that the movement is going to be a bit more natural. It has a little bit of acceleration at the beginning and then deceleration at the end. This is also where I can adjust any of my time values. For example, if I want to make this take a little bit longer, I can hit the button here, I can type in a value or I can manually adjust the node to the desired length if I prefer. If I want to add a translation, this is going to be a linear movement of a part or model. There are a couple ways that I can do this. First, I can select my animation and then select translation for a part. In this case, I'm going to select my part first, then choose it in the scene tree to assign the desired animation. Keyshot will then add that animation to my timeline in the animation window. And if I scrub through, I can get a preview of that animation. The issue that I'm running into here is that since this model was imported using the original units, it's only moving at a value of 1, which is 1 millimeter. So reset that back down to 0, and let's try a value that's going to be a little bit more visible. In this case, something like 100 millimeters. Now you can see that the drone's propeller visibly elevates from its starting position. In some cases, your animation will go in the opposite direction. To fix this, simply change your translation value to a negative number to reverse its direction. You can also toggle your animations on or off to make them visible. Now I have the part moving in the right direction with the correct unit value. I can then add a little bit of motion easing and extend the length of the animation I'm working with. Now I can select my animation and move it anywhere I'd like in my timeline. If I turn both the animations on and hit play, we can see that those parts are moving correctly. So what about animating these other parts? The second way you can apply animations is instead of working with the animation through the animation wizard, I can just select the part that I want to animate, then copy and paste an existing animation. In this case I've added the first animation to the front right propeller. I can then reselect that propeller, choose copy animation, then select another part in this case the back right propeller, then right click and select paste animation. Now not only will the parts share the same animation, but they will also share the same motion ease settings and time settings as well.
So now I've got those parts moving together. I can also add a rotation to those parts. I'm going to go ahead and select the front right propeller and then again instead of going through the animation wizard I can directly select the part that I want to animate and add a rotation. Since I'm emulating the actual rotation of a drone's propellers I can go ahead and change the rotation value from the default 90 degrees to a value of negative 1800. I'll then change the axis of rotation to ensure the prop is spinning around the correct axis and proceed to adjust the animation time to the desired length. I can also add a little bit of motion easing here. We also have the ability to add pivot points. So if you want to actually have this part rotate around another part, let's say a movable arm for a desk lamp, then you can pick a rotation point that's not the object itself. In this case, the default value selected is self, which means it will rotate around the center point of the selected part. So I have that part rotating correctly. I can now copy my animation and paste it to the other propellers to save time. In this case, I'm going to paste it as a linked animation to the back left propeller so that both can be adjusted and moved together. I'll then go ahead and paste that animation to the front left propeller as an unlinked animation, change the rotation to a positive 1800 degree value to cause the propeller to spin in the opposite direction, then I'll repeat the process and paste a linked animation to the back right propeller so that both parts are linked together. Now I can adjust my animations as needed within the timeline and can also adjust multiple animations at the same time by multi-selecting them within the animation tree. Another way to save time during animation is using the mirror function. Rather than reanimating all of my parts to move back in, I can simply multi-select my parts, right click, and select mirror. This will add the same animations in reverse to my timeline. The last type of animation I'm going to add to the scene here is working with the fade. In this case, let's say I want to fade this model in and then fade it back out. This can easily be done using the fade animation. I'll go ahead and open the animation wizard and select the fade animation option. Here I'll be able to choose whether to fade in or out. To fade in, I'll set the animation fade value from 0 to 100% and make the animation last for about a second. I'll hit finish and scrub through my timeline to preview it. Then just like I did before, I'll right click this animation and select mirror which will add the same animation fading out to my timeline below. I can now hit play and see a preview of my finished part and model animations. Thanks for watching this Keyshot 9 animation timeline overview. Let us know your thoughts on this tutorial in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, give it a like and share with your friends.